Today's lesson is going to be on the cardiovascular system, also known as the circulatory system. We're going to talk about some of the major parts, um, function, structure, and some of the things that are affected in your body by the cardiovascular system. For instance, we're going to talk about blood flow. What direction does it flow? What happens when your blood pressure is too high, too low? So how does blood pressure affect things along with the blood volume? We're going to get into different diseases of the cardiovascular system. And then finally, how does exercise and diet and things like that actually help you um, with the cardiovascular system? So, first thing we're going to do here is deal with the function. What is the major function of the cardiovascular system? As you can see here, there's really two parts that kind of tie into one. The transport of things throughout your body is the main function of the cardiovascular system. It takes and transports nutrients, it transports oxygen, it transports other things that need to go throughout your body. In fact, it also transports waste, but it pulls that waste out of your cells, out of your tissues, out of your organs, and then takes and moves that along through to your kidneys where they can be removed as waste from your body. So it transports that, those waste pieces to a place where they can be removed. Major functions, transport of things, and waste removal. Now, what does the cardiovascular system look like? What parts is it made up of? Well, the major structure of the cardiovascular system is your heart. Your heart takes and pumps things throughout your body, and it's the piece that keeps the cardiovascular system moving. Now, there are four major pieces to the heart, and we're going to talk about those in just a few minutes. Um, but the four major parts are the right atrium and the right ventricle, and the left atrium and the left ventricle. You also need to understand the veins. The veins actually take oxygen poor blood towards your heart. There is one vein that actually takes oxygen rich blood, but it takes things towards the heart. Okay? So the veins transport your blood towards your heart, into your heart. Arteries actually take blood away from your heart, okay? Veins bring blood towards your heart. Arteries bring it away from your heart. Now the capillaries are the little things in between these arteries and the veins. In your hands, in your muscles, in your fingertips. Your capillaries actually allow the blood to get into your different organs and, and things like that. So you've got your veins that bring blood away from um, away from your organs towards your heart. You have your um, arteries, which brings your blood away from your heart towards your, capillary, uh, towards your capillaries. And then those capillaries are what allow the blood to go throughout the rest of your body, um, throughout your, into your organs, okay? So, let's take a look at this picture, which deals with the actual structure of the heart. And I know it's a little bit of a um, complex drawing here. We've got things going in all different directions, but let's just take a look at it. We're going to start with number one right here. And if you look, number one is actually the right atrium, okay? And the right atrium is on the right side. The atriums are the top part of your heart, and the ventricles are the bottom part. So your blood actually starts in the right atrium. So it's the right side of your heart, and then that's if you are um, the heart the right side of the heart that's to you. So if you're looking at it, it's going to be the left side, okay? But it's gonna be the right atrium here, and blood starts there. It gets pumped into the right ventricle, and then from the right ventricle, it gets pumped out of the heart. From here, that blood, and the blue blood here is oxygen-poor blood. So this is blood that does not have oxygen in it yet. It's got a lot of carbon dioxide, not a lot of blood. So this needs to actually go towards your lungs. You've got your right lung and you've got your left lung. So what ends up happening is your heart pumps that blood out to your lungs. Your lungs take the carbon dioxide out of your system and put oxygen into your system. So now we have the red pieces which are the oxygen rich blood. The oxygen rich blood actually comes back into your heart, gets pumped back into your heart Okay. From your heart, it takes and goes into the left atrium. So this is the left side of your body, top side of the heart. This is the left atrium. It comes into the left atrium, goes down into the, gets pumped into left ventricle, 
and the ventricle takes and pumps that blood back into your body. And from here, it goes out what's called the aorta, okay? And this takes your blood up to the brain and your head, and then another piece brings it down to the rest of your body. And so the aorta pumps the blood up, oxygen-rich blood. Once it reaches these parts of your body, these other parts of your body, your body uses the oxygen. The oxygen gets removed from the blood. Your body is using the oxygen to go through cellular respiration. Your body is using that. It puts carbon dioxide back into your body, and the carbon dioxide rich blood, oxygen poor blood, comes back to the heart, back into the right atrium. So right atrium, right ventricle, out to the lungs, left atrium, left ventricle, and then it gets pumped out to your body. That's the direction of blood flow in your body. Now, as the body is pumping this blood, Okay. There's pressure. Think about squeezing a balloon. As you're squeezing a balloon, you're putting pressure on both sides if you're squeezing it towards the middle, and it starts to bulge out. As you do that, okay, it starts to bulge, adds pressure on the other sides of the balloons. So, that's what happens with your heart. As your heart pumps, you get these, this pressure that your heart pumps. As your heart contracts, the pressure is called the systolic pressure. As your heart relaxes, it's called the diastolic pressure. Now, blood pressure is important because, as we're going to see in a few minutes, high blood pressure or low blood pressure means that your blood's either not circulating the way it needs to or it's putting too much pressure on your heart and you're not going to be able to keep up that and your heart may start, may, um, start not functioning correctly. So, a good healthy adult has what's called a 120 over 80 for blood pressure. That's a, considered a good blood pressure. This is your systolic pressure and then your diastolic pressure down here. So as it's contracting, you get 120 and then as it's relaxing, you get 80, okay? And I'm sure many of you have seen the blood pressure cuffs that they use to measure these um, and you've probably had it happen to you in the doctor's office. Now, how do we actually regulate blood pressure? Our body does a good job of it normally. What happens is we have these sensory receptors that send messages to our brain. So when your heart is pumping too hard and you have too much pressure in there, what happens is that it sends a message to your brain that says, hey, we need to relax these muscles a little bit. We're pumping too hard. If we relax them, we're gonna drop that blood pressure, okay, if it's too high. If it's too low, it says, hey, we need to contract those muscles a little bit more. So we get those systems that send messages to our brain that say, contract a little bit more or contract a little bit less, and it increases and decreases your blood pressure like it needs to be. Another piece that does this is your kidneys. If we add more volume to something, you're gonna end up with more pressure. Think about as, as you take a balloon and you fill it up, if you're using a water balloon, the more water you put in there, the bigger the balloon gets, the more pressure you get on it. Okay, eventually too much pressure and it's going to burst. So, if our blood pressure is too low, our kidneys will take and add water to our system. If our blood pressure is too high, sometimes our kidneys will remove water from the system and that actually takes and helps to regulate our blood pressure also. So our kidneys can help regulate the blood pressure and sensory receptors sending messages to our brain telling our muscles to work harder, work a little bit less. Now there are three major diseases that deal with the heart and the circulatory system. The first one is just called heart disease. Now heart disease happens when we take different fatty deposits from our food, those fats get left in our circulatory system. When they get left in our circulatory system, they start to build up. That buildup is called plaque. The plaque takes and blocks your arteries, and when it blocks your arteries, it can lead to a heart attack. Now, the plaque doesn't always have to completely block the artery, but what can block the artery is a blood clot. So if you have plaque building up in your system, and all of a sudden one of those walls of the plaque buildup starts to burst, 
you actually can get blood that starts clotting right there. Okay, just like a scab when it starts to clot there, it will clot on the edge of these plaque uh, on the edge of this plaque. And when it starts to do that, it starts to form a blood clot. Now those blood clots can actually block your arteries, veins also, and also can cause a heart attack if it completely blocks going into or out of your heart. Another issue caused by um, blood clots is a stroke. If you have a blood clot that forms right around and blocks the arteries to the brain or the vessels within the brain, then you're gonna end up with a stroke. And this is where some of the cells within your brain actually die because they're not getting the, um, not getting the blood they need and not getting the oxygen they need. So a stroke causes your brain cells to die and is formed um, and is caused by a blood clot. The third one is high blood pressure. Now we just talked about blood pressure and what happens is your heart can actually start working too much. If your heart starts working too much, working harder than it needs to, harder than normal, you can get tears in the vessels, tear, tears in the arteries, and your heart can just stop working because it's just all of a sudden getting pumping, 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 and there's not enough energy left for it. So sometimes high blood pressure can cause issues also with that. Heart starts working no harder than normal, heart stops working. So what can we do to help control some of these diseases? We have some natural controls that we can do, controlling factors of heart disease that we can actually control. There are some things we cannot control. We cannot control our age. We cannot control our family history. Those are things we cannot control dealing with heart disease and any of the cardiovascular diseases. However, we can control exercise and diet and smoking. All can lead to heart disease, okay? With the, ex, uh, with the diet, low levels of fat in your food, if you have certain amounts of fat in your food, the fat gets deposited in your cardiovascular system, in your bloodstream, your body can't get rid of it, and it starts building plaque in your system. So that's one of the things we need to be aware of with our high fat diets. So if you start eating lower fat diets, your body starts working better. Aerobic exercise. Aerobic exercise increases the amount of oxygen you can get into your system at one time. If you go through aerobic exercise, you get increased oxygen in your system. Your heart does not have to pump as fast or as hard. If your heart doesn't pump as hard or as fast, it works longer for you. So aerobic exercise. And lastly, like I said, non-smoking. Don't smoke and you don't get other issues with the heart.